What's good, what's good? Good morning, good afternoon, good day to each and every single one of you. Welcome to our seventh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seventh episode of The Perfect Play, the podcast that teach you how to make your next move your best move. I am your humble and gracious host, Mr. DC Howard. Nevertheless, always the more giving what you need in order to be able to go to the next place. So I am accompanied by a great cast of individuals. They are phenomenal individuals. They are highly educated individuals, and they're going to give you a lot of great information on today. But even before I introduce them, I've got the absolute best co-host ever in the entirety of life working with me today. So I'm going to pass it over to her so she may introduce herself and give us a little bit more. And Phenomenal starts with me, your co-host for today. I'm AJ. I came to slay this perfect play and we would be nothing without the rest of our team and making it marketable from our team to yours. So I'm going to bring on our marketing rep. Hey everyone. Hey, perfect play. I'm Victoria and I'm your marketing rep for today. And I'm truly excited to introduce a talented trio of alumni joining us today. We're super, super excited to have them. I'm going to throw it over to Janaja first um, and go ahead and give us a little line. Introduce yourselves to the audience. Hey, y'all. It's your girl, Janadra. How you doing? All right. Let's kick it over to Liz. Hi, guys. I'm Liz. How are you guys? And then last but not least, to the man with the plan, Mr. Lavelle. What do you do? Uh, this is Lavelle. Hi, everyone. Perfect, perfect, perfect. As I stated earlier, we've got a just absolutely blockbuster cast today, and we're going to make sure that you're able to hear all the great things that are about to happen. But I'm actually going to pass it back over to our co-host, because in true Peer Ford fashion, we can't start any conversation before we check in. Co-host, take it away. Absolutely. I got it. And the check-in is called drum roll, please. We're checking in about your most memorable moment. So we all know that graduation is memorable, but what's most memorable is actually what happens right after graduation. So we want our special guest to tell us what was your most memorable immediate, a, po- a couple days, a couple months later, post-graduate experience? Because we know um, at any level, right after you graduate high school, right after you graduate undergrad, or right after you graduate graduate, that's when t- life tends to pick up and things start to get crazy. So why don't you tell us about your experience? Starting off with you, Liz. So my most memorable experience after graduation has to be my graduation party. Um, it was the first time my whole family came together to celebrate a big accomplishment of mine. I was uh, surrounded by close friends. It was like that day was just good vibes. Like we partied all night, like us Mexicans party a lot. So it was just good vibes. So I love that day. Thank you so much. And what about you, Lavelle? Uh, my most memorable moment was actually going to school college um uh, it was weird because i wasn't expecting to go in a school that i actually got accepted to i i chickened out at the last minute um and i thought that staying at home it will reduce some of the emotion but it was, it was still there uh, my mom was excited my younger siblings were excited yeah that was really it going back to school uh three months later yo that is so real like finding the time to go back is what's most important though and let's hear from our girl, Janadra. Definitely for me, it's always the food and the fellowship. Um, after all of my graduations, my family and I, we go out to some restaurant of my choosing, of course, and we celebrate and we talk about me and everything that I've done and the greatness that I am. So that's always the most memorable. <laughs> Absolutely. What I love most after a celebration or during a celebration is the meals because that's when they're best. And let's hear from our marketing rep. So, Victoria, tell us about your graduation experience. I'll go with my after my college graduation experience. The most memorable thing was literally the day after packing up my whole dorm, moving to D.C., a city I had never lived in before except for one summer, um, getting everything ready, visiting an apartment I had never seen before, trying to find a place to live. Very, very chaotic, very stressful, but it all turned out very well. And we were still riding, you know, the high of the graduation. So there was a lot of enthusiasm in those days. 
I love it. That that's the part that nobody tells you about. They're like, oh, you know, I get to, you know, go to college, go to graduate school, whatever. And it's like, you got to pack up your entire life. <laughs> so thank you all for checking in. I love having these conversations. We love getting to know you all and hearing about your experience and the realness that is. So I'm going to throw it back to our wonderful host, DC. And he's going to tell us what's next. Absolutely. Thank you, AJ. And thank you, special guests. Thank you, Victoria, our marketing rep, for being able to check in for us. I know for me, just really quick, when it comes to my high school graduation right after, is I love the fact that literally that night, um, you know, went over to Red Lobster with a couple of friends, and then we bowled. Like, we had a all-nighter of bowling. That was kind of the thing uh, back in the day. So that was pretty dope, uh, being able to do that. But yes, we are super excited about this podcast because we want to get into a very, very big conversation that's actually very relevant right now to our peer leaders that are about to graduate from high school, to our peer leaders that are just about to graduate in college. This is a really special segment just for you and any other individual that is a part of the class of 2020 is being able to talk about from grad life to professional life. And the thing about it is, is that the most intricate piece about graduating is that transition, just even like Victoria mentioned of how literally from the minute she graduated, packing up her whole life and moving down to Washington, D.C. And I can only imagine that that transition is probably, it can be rough, it can be challenging, it can be exciting, it can be a lot of things all in one. But of course, our emotions are able to impact our thoughts that are able to impact our actions when it comes to a transition. And the thing is, when it comes down to the actual transition from grad life to professional life, it takes a lot of preparation, it takes soft skill building, and it also takes self-advocacy that allows us to be able to be successful in this new space. And so on today's podcast, we're going to be able to ask a few questions of our phenomenal special guests about how they made the transition from grad life to professional life. And they introduced themselves, and you got to hear a little bit about them, but I want to make sure that I'm able to properly introduce them on today. And so first up, we have the phenomenal Ms. Janaja Harvey. She is a uh, bachelor's degree recipient in the major of urban youth development and health, and also had minors in psychology and human development and family studies from the University of Connecticut, as well as also she is a recent graduate, y'all, of a master's of education in school psychology and counseling services from Howard University. Next up, we have Lavelle Munger, who is a uh, bachelor's degree graduate of, of science and anthropology from the University of Missouri, St. Louis. And then also he is a master's degree recipient with a master's in education with an emphasis on higher education leadership from Florida Atlantic University. And last but not least, we have the phenomenal Lizeth Velasquez, who is not just a one degree, but a two degree recipient at the bachelor's level of first a degree in psychology, as well as also a degree in Chicano and Chicana studies from the wonderful, very, very challenging, but very, very vital Cal State system from Cal State University over in Northridge want to make sure you guys know about the real honors of the special guests that we have on today. I want to be able to kick it off first and foremost to Liz and then Lavelle is I want to hear from you guys about what were some of the emotions that you all felt before you graduated, if you will, into the real world? I had a mixture of emotions before graduation. I was excited, excited because I just wanted to get college over with already. I was tired of doing five years. I just wanted my degree. I was nervous and anxious and stressed out because a lot of my peers had told me that after graduation, like you start to miss college and it's just, it's way different than when you're in college. So that was stressing me out. And then also my family, like I'm the first in my family to graduate from college they were already setting pressure on me before even graduating. They were telling me like, okay, you're going to graduate college. You're going to get a really good job. You're going to be making bank. And then I was just like, no, like that's not the case. Like a lot of people don't get a good paying job after graduating, like right away. Like it takes time, but I knew a lot of that came. There's a lot of responsibility with that, but yeah, I was able to figure it out. At the end of the day, it's a bittersweet feeling now. I'm glad I'm done. But at the same time, I want to go back to school and do my master's, hopefully. 
Um, thank you for sharing, Liz, that I had some of the same feelings. Um, from my master's, uh, when I got my master's degree, it was a completely different feeling. I was in a different state. There was a there was doubt that anyone would even come down to see me graduate, loved ones. Uh, thank God my fraternity brothers were able to make it down. None of my immediate family was able to make it down, but because they had a strong relationship with my fraternity brothers, they were able to FaceTime me and utilizing uh, the technology that we have. Um, I also had three months to like move. So when I graduated, it was like, okay, my lease is up in August. Uh, I don't have a job anymore because I work on campus. So how, how will I make my money, enough money to pay rent for these next three months? And then where will I go? Uh, so I, I just hustled. Once I graduated, I just hustled the best way I could. I didn't allow it to defeat me because if I did, that wasn't going to put food on the table or money on the bills. I spoke with all of my mentors. I was really, you know, building a dope foundation with those that I can, you know, trust and talk to. And they just motivated me. Uh, so that's really the the biggest advice that I have for anyone is to find someone that you can be vulnerable with and that can lead you in the best direction possible to keep, for one, your nerves and uh, to prep you for postgraduate um, depression as well, which is the thing. Wow. I mean, you guys are already drop, dropping, I mean, amazing gems about all of this. Uh, Liz, you know, being able to talk about that family pressure, especially for a lot of our, if you will, listeners right now, that you are indeed first generation graduates, whether it be at the high school, bachelor's degree, or even graduate degree level. And then Lavelle, being able to talk about the fact that, you know, especially even for that graduate degree, and the fact that that is like, I mean, an amazing moment. You know, you talked about how in your check-in, being able to actually go to college was your most memorable experience from graduating high school. And then now to take it to the next level. I mean, that's just amazing. But, you know, also the challenge of not having necessarily that immediate family presence and having to kind of figure that out. And actually that brings a very interesting segue right now that I want to tap Janadra in, if you will, um, I know that you are literally a recent graduate. You are a part of this very unique and amazing class of 2020. And so talk to us a little bit about what it's been like graduating for you and the emotions you've had this year as a part of the graduating class of 2020. Yes, DC. Um, having to graduate in the midst of COVID-19 was definitely bittersweet. And I feel like that's the perfect word to sum it up, where it was like, I'm very excited about having accomplished such a great feat. I'm um, the first person in my family to have a master's degree. So it was like, yes, I did that. But then not having my family here, like I said, being able to fellowship and get some good food, that sucked. Um, so I spent my graduation day in my apartment by myself. I made myself a great dinner um, and I was on FaceTime with my family. So like Lavelle was saying, like being away from your family, that really sucks. But at the end of the day, that three years, it flew by. I'm excited that I graduated. And ultimately, like it really hit me. Um, it made me think about the fact that like, does it mean anything to you? Like, do your accolades mean something to you when there's nobody there to cheer you on? And I was just like, wow, that that hit my soul. So it was bittersweet, but a necessary moment for me to realize why I did it and like to remember my why. Thank you for sharing that. Like that's major. And I think that's definitely going to be a great uh, wisdom nugget for even our individuals that are dealing with the dynamic of being a part of the graduating class of 2020. So I'm actually kicking over to AJ with our next question. Yeah, and I love the conversation so far. Like, one of the things I just want to pull out is that, you know, graduation is a huge milestone, and it's a great celebration, time to celebrate, but the hustle never stops. Just because you made it past a milestone doesn't mean you stop going. So definitely thank you for keeping that in mind and telling us about that. So my next question for y'all is, how did your college experience, both either academic or social, prepare you for the professional world? And I'll start off with you, Lavelle. Uh, great question. Um, it really just polished me, honestly. Uh, everything that I was doing in high school, and it took me years to kind of reflect on this, right? So every time I was, you know, in high school, being very involved and motivated and doing all this weird stuff, it slowly but surely transitioned to college. And then I thought that was going to be a different experience, but it wasn't. Uh, and then I transferred. 
uh, to another university. And I was kind of nervous because of the bigger institution, as well as um, I already had friends at that school. So I was like, oh, man, I can talk stuff. Uh, but when I went, it really polished me, allowed me to become more comfortable with a diverse group of individuals. I went to, I like to say I went to a historically black high school. And then when I went to college, the first institution I went to was a historically black uh, university. So it was like, I was used to being around, you know, black people. So I went to a predominantly white institution where I was able to get uncom- get uncomfortable to build a new comfort zone for communicating with people that didn't grow up in a similar environment as I. I was the president of the Black Student Union on my campus. And that taught me a lot as it pertains to the politics around organizations, around leadership. Um, around that time, the Mike Brown incident happened. So how do I, as a leader, ensure that I'm presenting the correct message on behalf of the entire population? Uh, I, I learned a lot. Uh, I had some hiccups, to say the least, but I was able to establish what that looks like. And now in my professional career, um, the position that I have in my company is pretty much business development. So going out, speaking and networking with people, um, knowing the politics behind everything and not taking everything personal. And that's really the biggest thing that, thing that I was able to gain from high school all the way into now. Because I went to, it took me five years to graduate from college. I changed my major. I took a year and a half off. And then I also changed institutions. And then I went to grad school, which was completely taboo in the sunny state of Florida. And that sharpened me even more. Thank you, Lavelle, especially for sharing like your experience going to a PWI, but still being surrounded by real world experiences. You know, people often get this idea that once you disappear into college, you know, the world stops revolving around you. And it's real to have to deal with both the academic and the social at the same time. I'm trying to find that space of comfort and trying to per- persist through that. So thank you for sharing. And what about you, Janandra? Just like Lavelle, I'm having a transition from a historically black high school, but I transitioned into a PWI. So for me, that transition and being at UConn and then transitioning back into the professional world really taught me that I needed to advocate for myself. So when I was in high school, my counselors, my teachers, they did a lot of the advocacy for me because I was a great student. But I realized once I got to college, I was going to have to do that for myself. So I had to advocate for my individualized major. I had to advocate for my positions that I held on campus and the jobs that I had. And ultimately, that helped me with my networking skills, which were definitely uh, necessary when I took my first professional job um, with Peer Forward as the volunteer engagement coordinator, having to use those networking skills to be able to engage with our volunteers. And lastly, I guess I would say my experience in college really helped me to understand that I needed to do my own research going forward to figure out what life was like um, for me and how I was going to move into the next field in my life and the next opportunity, which was going to Howard for grad school. I love that response because it's so important to get ready um, for that next step. Like that is so, so incredibly important, getting yourself mentally and physically ready. And so Liz, I want to actually throw it to you to, to talk about that. How did you mentally and or physically prepare for the professional transition? I was very optimistic before graduating. Um, I was communicating a lot with my professors, with my friends, my loved ones, how I was feeling. Um, at the time when before I graduated, a month before I graduated, I was at a job that I really didn't love. Like I felt like I didn't have the passion for it no more. So I would always communicate with the professor, letting her know how I felt. And she would help me research jobs, like once I graduated. I did my research. I advocated for myself because I knew I, I had a friend that was in the field that I wanted to be in. Um, so luckily, right, right when I got off the plane, I was at a peer forward work um, training. I got a job offer from the job that I wanted. So um, it was very exciting, but at the same time, before that gap, after I graduated, I was unemployed for a whole month. During that time, I was stressed out because I had just gotten a car. So that car payment, that insurance was just like too much. And then aside from that, I had like my parents telling me like, hey, you need to be helping out. Like we can't be supporting you anymore. So it was mentally draining. So when I had the need to cry, I would just cry. But at the same time, once I cried, I just like got myself together and be like, all right, you got this. 
you're like whatever you set your mind to you always get it so what's the difference i have the job that i wanted so i'm feeling good i felt really good afterwards mentally i'm good right now so i'm proud of myself and you should be thank you so much for sharing that was that was so real like ain't nothing realer than if you want to cry you better cry you know the stress is real so you have to let yourself feel those emotions and Oh, so glad to hear that. So I'm going to throw it back to you to see you finish up these questions. Absolutely. Man, I am just loving this conversation right now. And so this is actually a kind of quick round question here. I want to hear from each of you. Just simply yes or no. Is a, We get this question all the time in Pair Forward. Are you able to get a job in the same field that you did all of this work for, whether it be an undergraduate or your graduate degree? So right now, are you working professionally? in the field that you majored in, in undergraduate or graduate? Each of you really quick, yes or no, and then I'll do some follow-up. Um, yes, I am. No, I'm not. Yes, I am. Okay, so interesting study here. Uh, we've got two out of three that are working in the field in which they studied about, uh, one that is not. And so I'll actually start off with you, Lavelle. You said that you're not. Um, if you could kind of give us a brief, if you will, uh, understanding of how you came into your current profession. I'm a currently a business owner. Uh, I met my business partners during my, my graduate studies. I'm here in Florida. We both had an interest and a passion in photography and videography, which ultimately get, was a side hustle, was a second source of income. I'm from there, we decided to take it more serious and do the, the legal uh, paperwork to get it done. And when I graduated in 2018, I really just sparked the question of, do we want to merge? Do we really want to make this bigger than what it was? Um, and from there, I applied for PhD programs in education. I applied for jobs and student conduct. Um, I didn't get any for three months. Didn't get a, a hair back from anyone for three months. Um, wow. once, I made, once I made my mind that I was going to do the photography um, thing, I began getting all of the offers that, oh, we're getting, reaching back out to you to see if you're still interested in this job, or um, we, you know, we have a, a positions available for this PhD program, but da, 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 da. But by that time I already committed and made my mind up to the, the company. And a year later, we was able to reach six figures and still growing right now wow. we want COVID-19 uh, with everyone else. And so it's, it's, just, it's a huge adjustment. I do not doubt uh, my decision. I don't regret it either. Wow. Wow. And I think that's definitely a story that individuals all across the world even should hear Lavelle of being able to experience the graduate, the undergraduate life, but still also being able to be a business owner. And it sounds like, as you literally said your words, you don't regret either decision for that. So thank you for that. Um, Janadra, can you share a little bit? You said that you are working in your, if you will, current area that you study for. Tell us a little bit about your current profession and how you got there. So I am currently a school psychologist, um, which is crazy to say, wow. And I found school psychology after, it was my senior year um, at UConn and I had created my individualized major and I was just like, girl, what are you gonna do with this? Like, what does the field look like for you? Um, so I just had to sit and do some research, like I was saying before, about how I can put everything that I learned about in my major into practice. So right after graduation, I moved myself right down to DC, uh, got to Howard and started studying school psychology, which really it gives me um, the opportunity to bring all of my research interests into the field that I'm working in. So I'm very interested in working with black students. I love education. I love health. Um, and I'm really interested in how all of those different factors begin to impact the lives of those students as they move out of school and into their real lives. So school psychology gave me the opportunity to do all of that. And that's why I love what I do and how my major from undergrad brought me there. Perfect. Perfect, perfect. Man, you guys are like, I'm literally being inspired right now hearing about your uh, different uh, narratives and how you guys are doing this. We're actually about to close out this segment, but if you guys can, if literally like 15 to 30 seconds or less, give us one thing you wish someone would have told you about before you graduated at any level. Anybody can start. We want to be able to hear from each of you. Um, I want to be 
don't stress out if you don't know what to do next. Like, what's your next step? It's okay if you don't have things figured out yet. You will eventually. Perfect. Communication is key. The more people you you allow yourself to talk to and become comfortable with, the better chances you'll be able to get access to resources. Just to be transparent and honest, nobody knows what they're doing. Um, So you don't need to always have it all together. Life is a journey and you'll figure it out. Wow. Amazing, amazing advice. Amazing commentary from our special guests. Definitely thank each and every single one of you uh, for this. Um, This has definitely been a quality, um, if you will, conversation about from grad life to professional life. But before we head out, there are a couple more things we want to get to. So I'm actually going to go to this quick segment that we call You Ask, We Answer. And so I'd love to hear from either our phenomenal co-host or actually one of our uh, coaches in the field, uh, Cornelius, to be able to give us that question for the day. And we'll have one of our special guests give us the answer to that question. All right. So we have our question of the day from our peer leader, Gabrielle Harrison Jr. at Dr. Henry Wise High School in Maryland. She wants to know, how do you make friends as an adult? Mm. Who wants to take a stab at this? Janadra? Come on, talk to him. <laughs> That's actually really funny um, because most of my friends that I met as an adult were from my graduate program. And then I just made friends with their friends. And that's how I was able to get a good network of friends. But really just being able to, again, network and get out of your comfort zone and just talk to people. That's how you do it as an adult. And it's scary because, like, for me, I'm in a new place now. Um, So, yeah, really trying to get out your bubble and just talking to people. Because, like I said before, nobody knows what they're doing. So, everybody's feeling the same way that you are. So when you're just talking to strangers and feeling how you feeling, they're feeling the same way. And they're looking for a connection and they're looking for somebody to talk to. Oh, that is so real. And thank you for answering that, Ginger. Um, we have no more time in this segment, unfortunately, but we're going to keep it moving with this perfect play. And right now I want to bring in my teammate from the marketing team here at Peer Ford. And she's going to give you what we call tips and hints at what's going on and what's going down at Peer Ford. So I'm going to go ahead and throw it to our girl, Victoria. Hey, everyone. I'm back with some exciting news. So we've talked about the transition to professional life. But the first part of that, right, is the celebration stage. You have to take a moment to celebrate that you graduated. You did it. And well, even if that can't be in person. Peer Forward has planned some very exciting things to keep hyping you guys up to really commemorate the moment with you guys because we are so impressed and so proud of you guys. So uh, the week of May 26th, we'll be posting on our social media some shout outs, some send offs, a lot of um, really fun content to really get you guys excited about your graduation. Um, All of that will be leading up into virtual block parties that we'll be hosting with workshop cohorts. So just keep tabs on emails or any communications from your peer forward coaches to catch those invites and stay tuned on peer forward social media so you can be a part of the big celebration. Thank you so much for that, Victoria. I cannot wait for all of these celebrations to see your great and smiling faces. The class of 2020 definitely is unlike any other class before, not just because they're amazing, not just because they're phenomenal, not just because they've worked hard to get to this point, but because they understand what sacrifice means. And they understand that no matter what, your success, your achievements, your accomplishments cannot be taken away from you. And so honestly, with all of my hearts from the depths of my soul, I thank the class of 2020 for all that they do. Um, And we can't wait to celebrate you inside and outside, you know, when that opens back up. Absolutely. So, you know, we're going to throw it back to my man, DC. What's going on? Absolutely. I mean, I think that's a perfect segue, AJ. We definitely dedicate this episode to the class of 2020. You guys are amazing. And as we close out, I just want to be able to thank the phenomenal Victoria, our amazing special guest, Lavelle, Janadra, Laseth, and of course, last but not least, our phenomenal co-host, AJ, for another amazing and eventful seventh episode. You know, seven is the number of completion, you know, of the perfect play. But I think we got one more left 
in the chat. So make sure you come back next week. Um, of course, we want to make sure that you are sharing this episode with your peers, with your friends, with your loved ones, with everyone that you can, because this is a great listen. And once again, this is your host, DC Howard. Nevertheless, always the more, making sure that we proceed giving you what you need. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Have a great Memorial Day weekend. And we look forward to having you back with us on The Perfect Play.